we have Gareth Moore uh, and Brian McDade um, here from the Dairy Call Centre campaign. Um, we've had a motion previously about this issue. It's an important issue across the city and it, it impacts a lot of workers uh, across the city as well. Thank you, Brian and Gareth, for coming in today and uh, doing the presentation. And um, I think that the, the what you've been able to kind of discover in terms of the way the first source management has operated is, I would describe it as corruption. And um, the secrecy, the, the, the trying to keep everybody at arm's length uh, when, when questions have been asked. And it must be very, very frustrating uh, for yourselves as the, the, you know, the initiators of the uh, Dairy Call Centre campaign and for Aegis and for the workers themselves. I, I, I propose now that we endorse the proposal that uh, the campaign is putting forward. I think if we can uh, work, uh, set up a working group, it can look at all the proposals that you have there in terms of a task force. Um, and working with unions and working with groups of workers who are, who are facing um, uh, these types of conditions. Um, so, you know, fully support your proposals. And, um, um, uh, you know, I know the campaign is very, very difficult because the redundancies are kind of happening. Um, I do see this as a platform for continued organising because, uh, you know, there's lots of people in Derry who, in the Northwest who have these types of jobs. So thank you again. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Uh, um, before I, I know that you've made a proposal, uh, you don't have a second. I'm going to wait until we have the discussion and then we can discuss the proposal at the end. So the next indicated speaker is Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thanks to Gareth and Brian uh, for, for their presentation. I don't know whether I should or shouldn't declare an interest as a former employee of First Source, um, but your Presentation and, and your campaign to date um, has clearly um, been, been very noticeable, and I think your suggestions or, or your asks of council um, are very uh, make a lot of sense. Um, whenever we're looking at paying conditions, um, job losses, and things like that, because we often find um, that whenever these things are announced, we're on the back foot and we're trying to, to firefight and react. For for those that work in first source, um, you know. Beyond our no illusion, it's a, it's, a, it's quite a difficult job. Um, there's lots and, and lots of pressure. I remember when I worked in First Source getting what's called an RD, a, a recorded discussion, because my after call was less than five seconds. That's five seconds, less than five seconds to leave a note, hang up and take another call. Um, and if you're doing that for 10 or 12 hours a day, um, it can be quite, uh, it can play on your own um, mental health. Um, make no mistake about it. Um, but that's the type of pressure that those people um, are under and have been under. And to be brought on to a call um, very unexpectedly um, with senior management, 500, I believe, or, or near that figure, were brought onto the call that day to be told that, you know, where jobs are at risk. And as I say, you know, at that point, it was very um, clear that it didn't matter what anybody said, that those jobs were going. And it was firefighting at that stage. Uh, Gareth, I think it was whenever he was mentioning the, the asks that some the deputation um, touched on and, and said, we don't need political division um, getting in the way. And I fully agree with you. But I do think that within this council, we've got um, from all of the political parties and, and the independents, when it comes to issues like this, we're very good at working together to try and um, support people. So I don't think that political division um, whenever we're talking about people's jobs in terms of conditions, um, it's going to be a big, huge issue that we're going to face. So uh, I've got two more indicated speakers, Councillor Donnelly and then Councillor Jackson, and then we can, you can advise on your vision for the task force. Um, I would share just uh, um, <clears throat> on second uh, Councillor Harkins' uh, proposal. Uh, I have spoke to some workers from first source and for them it's inevitable that you know and and but when I put this ideas to them they they do think that it's it's a good idea and it's an important idea not particularly for them they're they're busted uh I think for them at the moment it's it's uh down to unions negotiating a good well not a good deal but a, a, as good a deal as that is possible 
uh, you know, when these firms come here, they're, they're, there's a whole hullabaloo about, you know, and, and they are welcome and they're welcome jobs. But unfortunately, some firms, you know, when they've got all the benefits and, 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 and you know, and got everything they've got out of workers, sometimes, you know, they're not as forthcoming and in, in, in workers' rights and that. So any workers that I have spoke, they thought that this would be a good idea for for the people who who remain there in first source because there there will be jobs there and for all our uh, people in similar type of of employment so happy the the uh the second the proposal thank you councillor jackson come over chair and um welcome the brian gareth and from our perspective um we're fully supportive of the trade union movement and we all due respect, I don't want to see our council officers um, and are, are, being um, involved in, in any sort of campaign that could potentially put off investors. Um, and we want to send a clear message that Darren Straban is open for business. We want to create jobs. Um, we don't want any potential employer um, being fearful of of their um, internal business being discussed in an open forum in, in a council chamber. That's not what we're about. We would have serious concerns about um, setting up structures that could potentially put off um, put, put off investment and put jobs in jeopardy um, through uh, through what is undoubtedly. And well-meaning, and well-meaning proposal, but there's ramifications that we're very mindful of, and our position is clear. We want to um, send a clear message that Darren Straban is open for open for business. We want to attract investment, and we want to support our trade unions. They ensure that the jobs that are created are well paid, and the conditions are are, are adequate. So. Um, in, in relation to the proposal, um, it's not necessarily a political di division, but it's we're we're far from convinced that that's the that's the pathway that's going to achieve any sort of real outcome for for workers in the city and district. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. And the final indicated speaker is Alderman Cook. Thanks, Chair, for letting me in. Um, and thanks to the boys too for the presentation. Um, I just want to say that um, we would be fully supportive of, of the boys as well. Um, I'm just going to concur with more or less what the, the other speaker said, you know, but I would be interested as well just to see what role council would be taking and the, the groups as well, just more or less what um, Councillor Tierney said. So thanks very much for letting me in. Thank you, Alderman Cook. Uh, so I think that everybody has had their say. Uh, and Councillor Tierney had asked Gareth and Brian to share their vision for the task force. Uh, the questions and the the concerns from some of you about uh, a potential working group. What I can say from my experience, as I alluded to earlier, I'm also a councillor over in Yorkshire. And one thing we do is when you have an emotive issue in your community, you look to address it with all those that can influence that issue to the best of the community. So for example, Better Buses is one that I'm on at the moment, Antisocial Behaviour is another working group, but you're right, you have to define the roles within that working group for those that are there, council, local community groups, trade unions, for example. So what we do, and this can be what part of the proposal is, is when we set up a working group, if it's agreed, if any council is involved, there's a terms of reference of what your role is within that working group. You know what you if there's any conflict of interest you step away but for us the reason we've asked for you guys to be involved is because you're influencing the community if we as unions yes we campaign we're the forefront of any campaign as unions to get better rights for workers but if we can't engage with the employer and you know we've reached a dead end or a barrier we need help and support in that and that's where you guys come in because you have the influence if i can come in there as well uh, so, first of all, I mean, in terms of the Trades Council running the working group and asking for support from politicians as and when needed, that's the status quo. That's where we are now. Nothing needs set up. That's already in place. 
So what we're saying is we, we've came across barriers in this campaign, specifically in re relation to First Source, in terms of the employer not engaging with us, it not being a recognised union, uh, unionised workforce. So are we saying that those staff, you know, if you're not the union, then you, you shouldn't get any help? What we're trying to do here is recognise that outside of a recognised employer, there's a lot of your constituents, a lot of people from this city, who are directly being impacted by poor employers. And I appreciate the concern that we don't want to drive out investment, but we've got to remember who are we going to be challenging. So the only occasion you should be publicly calling out an employer is if they're a bad employer, and in which case you should be brave enough to call them out. And when we say we're concerned about the ramifications for investment, for employers, and that's why we don't want to involve ourselves, what about the ramifications for the people, for the workers? We, we already have a group in terms of the trade unions, in terms of the Dairy Trades Council, who will advocate for workers. But the issue we want to address through this task force is a mechanism outside of the trade unions where people can still receive support. We've seen that political parties are willing when these announcements are made because political representation has gone in and you have spoke to the employers. And that's, that's great and that's in good faith you're doing that. But it became very clear that through no fault of your own, I don't mean this point as a criticism, but there wasn't the knowledge and the expertise that comes with the trade union movement to make those meetings worthwhile and meaningful. We came out of them saying, yes, First Source made these promises. First Source are going to look after the staff. First Source are going to be open and honest. And what have we seen? The complete opposite. The point where workers, low-paid workers, have gone out of their own pocket, the employer solicitor, they asked their employer a question, which they've still not received a response to. What we're saying, in essence, is something needs done. Employment is too important to this city, and the idea that we sit back because we're concerned there might be problems if we do something isn't acceptable. So we would suggest that we're here to say as political representatives, you just have a job to do. I know you are keen to do it, and we're saying, hey, let, let us help you do that job. Let's make sure that mean, meeting is meaningful. Let's make sure that we give you the knowledge and expertise you need to make sure you challenge appropriately that you know the questions to ask, the pitfalls that are going to come up. Just think back to that first announcement, those first meetings uh, that some of your parties had with that business and all the promises and how you came out feeling, no, they're going to do right by staff. And then look at where we are now. It didn't work. Eller, things have changed, or you were lied to. That's where we are. So we need to recognise that that process we've all been doing year after year in this city, trying to save jobs, and I know there's sincere intent to do so, I don't doubt it for a second, but we have to recognise that what we've been doing previously isn't working, and it's time to try something new. We're saying, use are the political representatives, use are the leaders, lead, and we will give you all the support, knowledge and expertise we possibly can to make sure you do the best possible job, and that's what we're asking for. Thank you. Thanks for that, Gareth. Uh, right, I, I am caught, we've spoken about this for quite a while, and it's a very important issue, but we have a lot of other agenda items to get through. I'm conscious that the Councillor Harkin has a proposal which is seconded by, by Councillor Donnelly, but I'm going to ask Councillor Harkin's permission if I may make a separate proposal, uh, because there, there is a bit of vagueness here in terms of the purpose of the task force. I would suggest uh, that officers engage, officers from the council engage with the, the Dairy Call Centre campaign to establish a potential terms of reference for this working group. Chair, sure, thank you. Um, two questions, um, one on your proposal. Would it not be the officers engaged with the Dairy Trade Unions Council as opposed to the Dairy Call Centre campaign? Um, because it's in the proposals that's on the paper, it talks an awful lot about the trade union council as opposed to the, the, the singular campaign. And the second thing, um, in terms of any working group task force or whatever you want to call it being, being set up, what is your vision of 
the membership of it? Is it all elected councillors? Is it one from each party? What way do you, do you see that? Or is that something now with your proposal that we'll see coming back from officers? But I'm happy to support your proposal and second it. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Chair. If I could just hear from Gareth and Brian about what they think of your proposal, that would be helpful. Uh, so, first of all, yeah, in terms of the Dairy Trades Council engagement instead of through the Dairy Call Centre campaign, uh, yeah, that, that is preferred. And again, through the Dairy, uh, uh, Dairy Trades Council, we've obviously got all the trade unions in the city. So, you know, it, there might be an issue that rises isn't specific to call centres, in which case it, it'd be better that way. And that's why we, we proposed it in that regard. Sorry, there was a second question in regards to your own proposal. Um, I think there was one from Councillor Tierney about how, how many councillors were. Oh, sorry, yeah. There is, but if we're going to go with this proposal, I'm happy to see what the paper comes back and suggests, but it's whatever way you want. Yeah, so look, I'm comfortable with this, you know, sitting down. Like, I think the key to all this is the key, the, the key principle of this, I believe, that the trade unions and the council need to work together. So in terms of proposals, sitting down and hammering out the detail, I'm absolutely uh, uh, comfortable with that. Thank you. Councillor Jackson? Yeah, a um, couple of points. Um, I suppose I'm a wee bit confused in relation to the, the original proposal was suggested that because we, we know that there are engagements with political parties and, and the Trade Unions Council, um, but it's when we're formalising and asking council um, to get involved. Um, is something that we've got difficulty with. It's not the role of council, um, and that's. Uh, so I just wanted to put it out there. If if we were initially speaking about um, continuing and 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 for more formalising what already takes place, we've no issue with that. But if we're talking about setting up new structures that involves councils, um, then it's not our role. And I'm just. I, 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 with all due respect to the campaign, it's worth pointing that out that it's not the role of councils to be stepping into that the, the the realms of trade unions. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, Councillor Jackson. And, and I think if, if this committee agrees to the proposal that we set up, the terms of reference, I would hope the terms of reference would clearly define uh, the roles and responsibilities of the trade union members and and the council members. Mr. Hargan. Thank you. Yeah, look, in response to Councillor Jackson, I feel council should be an advocate for trade unions. Um, I think it should be an advocate for workers' rights. I think it should uh, make that its primary uh, job. I don't think everybody will agree with that. Um, and I think that in terms of government today, I think government is found wanting in terms of standing up for workers' rights. Um, and we only have to look at working conditions across our district to, to see that. We've got the lowest medium wage of any council district in the north. Um, you know, we're not going to go through all the statistics, but clearly government isn't doing enough uh, for uh, to be um, advocating for workers' rights and supporting trade unionism. I think there's been no dissent in terms of the proposal. Um, council officers will engage with the Trade Unions Council. Uh, to formulate terms, terms of reference that clearly define the roles, responsibilities, purposes of the group, uh, and the paper will come back for further consideration at this committee.